everyone. Today I wanted to walk you through the process of grooming a horse. So whether you're a beginner and you need to know how to do this, or if you're just looking for a basic daily grooming routine, this video will help answer your questions. As always, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos. So I like to think of Tucker as a neat freak. He's always super nice. He doesn't like to roll a lot. But even though his coat looks great, I'll just show you exactly what I do with him on a daily basis just to help keep him clean. Okay, so real quick, as I go to get my brushes, let's talk about some of the benefits of grooming your horse. So one benefit of grooming your horse is that it helps desensitize your horse to human touch and it also allows you personal and quality time with your horse to get to know them better. But anyway, so if you have a young horse or a horse that came maybe not from the best situation, grooming your horse just allows your horse to learn that human touch is good and it's gonna feel good and gentle rather than being rough. So this is also a great thing to do if you have like foals or young horses. You can do this with them to just help them get used to that touch and being touched everywhere that, you know, otherwise a horse may not be comfortable with. So for example, I'm an equine massage therapist, for those of you who didn't know, and I've learned that there are a lot of places that horses don't actually like to be touched. Usually it's like down by their genitals or in the inside of their leg right here. And so if you have a horse that's not used to that, and then you suddenly go to massage them or touch them or groom them, you may get kicked which no one wants to do. And so just getting them used to that touch so you can touch them everywhere and you can be confident that they're not gonna wallop you or bite you. So another great benefit for grooming your horse regularly is that it allows you to inspect them for injuries or maybe soreness they're experiencing. The last thing I wanna do is get on my horse if they have a sore back and they buck me off. No one wants to do that, right? And last but not least, grooming your horse makes them look good. Tucker has a lot of ladies to impress, you know? So it's up to me to make him look fabulous for them. Ain't that right, buddy? So now it's time to get into the basic steps for our grooming routine. So the first and obvious step is to secure your horse. I don't like my horses walking away when I'm grooming them or trying to do something. So I'm gonna secure them to make sure that they'll stay still and I can do what I can do. Horse will just stand there nice. So I have Tucker in the cross ties today. You can also tie your horse up. Um, you can ground tie if your horse ground ties or you can just hold the rope and have them stand there while you do that. So once your horse is secured, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is start with a curry comb. So this here is a curry comb. As you can see, it kinda looks like a circle. Um, here is another thing you can use as a curry comb. And you can notice that the little teeth are just a little different. Um, some horses have sensitive skin, and so you're gonna wanna find a curry comb that has smaller teeth for them. Um, Tucker here, he has pretty thick skin, but I one time had a paint who had like pink white skin and she needed a very soft sensitive curry comb so I would use something like this. So I'm gonna use my curry comb to break up any mud patches my horse may have and also to bring to the surface any dirt that may be lying underneath their coat. And so I can use it in a circular motion like this and I can press pretty good and hard to bring that dirt up. You don't wanna be, you know, brushing really soft or you're not gonna get that dirt. You wanna use a good and strong pressure and see he's chewing so he likes it. But this can also help notify you if you're using this pressure and there's a spot that your horse is sensitive and maybe sore, this can help you know that they are sore because they'll react to it. So you can use your curry comb all over the horse's body from their neck to their butt um, since it does have these thicker teeth, you may want to stray away from the legs and the horse's face just because those are more sensitive areas and you don't want to use those big teeth of the brush on those areas. So we've used the curry comb to bring the dirt to the surface, so now we're going to use the hard brush to sweep the dirt away. So this brush is called a hard brush because the bristles are kind of rigid and hard. So if you were to brush your arm, it kind of scratches you and it's kind of uncomfortable. And so this is a hard brush. There's also a soft brush and they look the exact same. So it's important to know the difference, but you're gonna use the hard brush right after you use the curry comb. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So you should think of the hard brush as kind of like a broom because these bristles, they remind me of a broom. So when you use it, you know, you're sweeping that dirt away, but you're also gonna wanna brush in the direction of the hair to properly remove that dirt. So if you look at Tucker closely, you can see that the hair is lying this way. So I'm gonna sweep the way of the hair. So when you're using the hard brush, you can use it all over the horse's body, you know, as you use the curry comb. But, you know, these bristles can be a little uncomfortable. Like I said, when I go like this, it does scratch me. So you are gonna wanna stay away from sensitive areas on your horse, um, back by the genitals or maybe their lower leg, even their face if they're really sensitive. Sometimes I will use this brush if they have mud on their legs. 
I'll just use this to declump the mud because it's a little bit more softer than the curry comb. But always be looking at your horse's reaction to determine where you should be using it. You know, I don't want to use it if they're going to be uncomfortable. Next up, we're ready for our soft brush. So as you can see, this looks just like a hard brush. The only difference is when you run your hand on it, it's a lot softer and these bristles move a lot easier. So that's why it's called a soft brush. Okay, so a soft brush can actually be used on the more sensitive areas of your horse. And a soft brush is just simply used to remove any remaining dirt that may be on your horse once you use a hard brush. So just like the hard brush, you're gonna brush in the way of the hair, whether you're brushing the legs, because you can use this on the more sensitive areas, or the coat, or even the horse's face. Yeah, and you like this, don't you? Brush right in between your giant Dwight Schrute part there. Yeah. So the next thing I'm gonna do once my horse is groomed is I'm gonna use a hoof pick to pick out their hooves. So you should try and pick out your horse's hooves at least once a day if you can. This just helps remove any debris that may cause them discomfort and also just helps get that gunk out of their hooves that could create a bacterial infection or a fungal infection. So I'm gonna pick out his hooves right now. So when you go to pick out your horse's hooves, can I help you? When you go to pick out your horse's hooves, you wanna make sure you're standing next to the leg you're picking out. You don't wanna stand in front of it. You don't wanna stand behind it because you don't want to get kicked. So make sure you stand beside it. And then I'm going to take my hand and just run it down his leg to ask him to pick up his hooves and to let him know that that's my intention and just to let him get used to that touch on his legs. So I'm going to run my hand down. And then when I get to about here, I can pinch. You can feel that there's like a tendon right here. You can pinch in between there or you can pull up on their feathers that they have or their fetlock. So I'm going to pull up on his fetlock because he has a lot of feathers there picks up his hoof. So I'm gonna hold the hoof with my hand that's closest to the horse. And then to pick out the hooves, the best place to start is at the corner of the heel. So you can see you can start at both of these corners here. And there's a groove right here that allows you to dig nice and deep in there to get the dirt out. And then you're just gonna wanna be careful of this triangle here. This is the frog. And it's a vital part of the hoof, so make sure you do not go digging into that. But I'll just start here, I'll dig into this groove. So now that I've picked this out a little bit, you can see these grooves a lot more clearly. So now I'm just going to run my hoof pick along the edge of their hoof just to remove any dirt from around here. Because believe it or not, but the dirt can actually get grown into the horse's hooves. So if your horse likes to pull their hooves away, one thing you can try is to, when they go to pull, tip their toe up. And that kind of takes that power away from them. The reason you want to be able to keep them from kicking their leg away from you is that once they learn they can do it once, they're going to try and keep doing it over and over again. So once I'm cleaning out the horse's hooves, I'm going to put the hoof down gently just so that the horse doesn't stomp or get bruises on his feet. And I want them to learn that it's up to me to put the hoof down, not them. So there you go, buddy. So if you want a more in-depth look at cleaning a horse's hooves, I made a whole video about it. You can check it out and I'll put the link in the description. Oh, you want to eat that one too? I don't think you'd like to eat this. Okay, so the last brush I'm gonna use today is the mane and tail brush. I'm gonna use this to brush out my horse's mane and tail. So this isn't something I include in my daily grooming routine, just because if you brush your horse's mane or tail too much, you can thin it out. But I do do this probably twice a month or once a month, just to make sure there's no dreadlocks forming and my horse's mane and tail are staying nice and clean and untangled. So if you're working on growing out your horse's mane or tail, you may wanna use a hard brush to do that and Tucker wants to eat this. Um, and the only reason you do this is a hard brush is a little gentler on the hair and it won't rip it out like this brush will. So I'm just gonna start at his mane and I'll start at his withers and his mane is pretty easy to brush right now because I have it pulled so it's thin and it's short so I can just do this really quick. Just brush that layer. Oh, look at him. Good boy, good boy. So now I'm gonna work on Tucker's tail here. Just a quick note, when you work on the tail anytime, you don't wanna stand directly behind the horse, you wanna stand to the side. So I'm beside his leg right here, for the obvious reason, so they can't just wallop you. What I'm gonna do, I have my Cowboy Magic, which is a detangler here. I'm just gonna spray his tail, because I know it's gonna be tangly, and this will help untangle it. So when I'm ready to brush the tail, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna pull it to me. So I'm to the side, pull the tail to the side, and then I'll just start at the bottom because that's where it's going to be the easiest and the least untangled. And as I untangle the hair, I'll just work my way up the tail. And Cowboy Magic makes it so much easier. He's like, I haven't had this done in a while. You know? 
Voila, beautiful, gorgeous. I wish my hair was that easy to brush. So now that we've covered the basics of grooming, I'm gonna walk you through some safety tips to remember when it comes to brushing your horse. So in the summer, we love to use fly spray on our horses to keep those pests away. One thing to remember is that you're gonna wanna start using the fly spray at your horse's hoof or the bottom of their leg and slowly work up. And this is just because if the horse is uncomfortable and has never been sprayed, you're gonna know that they're uncomfortable rather than just spraying and having them freak out and put you in danger. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom of his leg and gradually work up. And Tucker's really good with the fly spray. So the next tip I wanna cover when it comes to safety when grooming your horse is when you go to walk behind them, always remember to touch them and let them know you're back here and also to walk close behind them. And this is just to help protect you if the horse is to kick. So if you're standing close to them and they kick, they can't really get power behind that backward motion. But if you're standing far away and they kick, you're gonna get hurt. So just remember, let them know you're there, walk close behind them, and you should be okay. The last tip is for those of you who are working with a horse you may not know or that you're not really comfortable around. If you're scared of them kicking you or going at you, what you can do is put your hand in the middle of their leg. This will help the muscle keep from contracting and so they can't get a good powerful kick at you. So if I'm working with the shoulder, I can put my fist right here. And if I'm working with the hind end, I can put my fist right here. And this way I just kind of have leverage on their legs if I need it. And it can also help keep that muscle from contracting like it needs to to kick. If this video was helpful for you, do us a favor and hit the like button and then go subscribe to our channel. And if you all have stuff that you like to include in your daily grooming routine that I didn't mention, comment down below and I would love to try it. Stay tuned for more weekly horse videos.